Bring your knife or not? No, I can't find it. Hi, Naomi. Good morning. Did you get your breakfast? Pretty girl. Pretty girl. I like your fur coat. Good morning friends and welcome back to the cabin here in Alaska. It's a brisk negative two degrees today and we're just out doing the morning chores. We have to head into the post office because we have about 500 Christmas cards to mail out to you guys. So we finally got those all filled out, stamps on everything, everything's addressed. And we are gonna go pop those in the mail to you guys today. So keep an eye out for them. Finally, they are on their way. So I wanted to point out something really quick. A lot of you had asked when we first got the sheep this spring, summer, when we got our new flock of sheep you know how are you going to deal with all the snow in the sheep pasture like do you have to shovel a trail for the sheep to get around and as you can see the sheep are just like any other animal they create little game trails for themselves so we came in in the very beginning the big the first big snowfall joe came out and just did like a little trail all the way through to their shelter and then they've maintained it ever since then so it's really no problem as you can see the snow is pretty much halfway up the side of the fence. So a lot of you are concerned and asking once the snow falls, cause we get a good, you know, six to eight feet of snowfall out here every year. Can they just walk right over the fence? And the answer would be yes, but because they create these walking trails, we don't really have that problem. Good morning. You've been a little Mr. Cranky Pants lately, huh? Yeah, haven't been so nice. Nice chatting with you, see ya. Oh. Mm. Here go. Oh, boy. Watch, he might chase me. Oh, oh my goodness. Are you showing off for the camera? All right guys, we just got home from the post office, got all those cards mailed out. Holy cow. 
it was well over 500 cards that we shipped out and I'm just so excited that they're finally in the mail and I can't wait for you guys to get them. I hope you love them and it really meant a lot to us to be able to just kind of give a little piece of us that was here in our home. We all signed them for you guys uh, just to send to you so that you know that we really do cherish you guys here on our channel and our little community that we have built. So I am really excited. I have something I wanna share with you. Something came in the mail today. Looky here. Our very first Home Free Alaska calendar. Look at that. You guys have been telling me in the comments section all year long, make a calendar, make a calendar, because you guys know I love taking photos and obviously videos. And so I took a bunch of photos from the last year since we've been here in Alaska, and I put together this beautiful 2024 Alaska calendar. So if you guys would like to support our family, our homestead, our channel, I'm gonna link that for you guys in the video description, and you can go and get your Home Free Alaska calendar. You know, be easy on me. This was my first calendar, and I am really excited to go into 2024 24 more on purpose about getting a beautiful photo for you guys every single month of the year for next year's calendar this year uh, the ca yeah Rusty and Asher are both feeling much better they are currently they're kicking around one of my ornaments that they knocked off the Christmas tree. Joe and I were even talking about maybe making some options for you. We know a lot of you have Belgian Malinois dogs like we do, and it's a beautiful breed. We get some pretty awesome shots of the dogs up here in Alaska, so I might have like a little variety that you can choose from next year for your calendar. Maybe a 2025 Belgian Malinois calendar with some beautiful shots of the dogs every season of the year. And then also maybe like homestead animals, get some beautiful shots of the chickens and the sheep. And would you look, look, what are you doing? You got, they're out of control. They're out of control. Anyway, I'm excited about the calendar. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. I just thought that the, the pictures turned out beautifully. Uh, these were all pictures taken by yours truly. Me, yes, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. You can see those previews if you go and click that link and check it out. Um, just, you know, some pictures here on our homestead. You guys know we get some beautiful sunsets and just everything right here on the homestead. And then a few pictures of us out on some of our adventures on the boat and hiking Hatcher's Pass and things like that. So anyway, check out the link. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoy it and you love it, then maybe it's something we'll continue to do every year. And like I said, Joe and I have some ideas of getting creative and doing a few different calendars, maybe some fishing calendars each season, some ice fishing, summer fishing, salmon fishing in the fall, all the things. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really excited. It's it's another creative outlet for me. I've always got a camera in my hand and my camera, I just have thousands upon thousands of pictures because there's just so much beauty here in Alaska and I'd love to share that with you guys. Tonight I am making some homemade biscuits to go along with a yummy one pot meal for dinner. I think you guys have probably seen me make this in some of my videos. I love one pot meals because, hey, there's not as many dishes, right? So these biscuits are gonna go wonderfully with this meal. It's just a chicken, broccoli, cheesy casserole with rice in it, but it's yummy and it's perfect for leftovers too. As usual, I'll be sure to link the recipe for this dinner in the video description. I don't have any fancy biscuit cutters, so I always just use the ring of a mason jar and it works just fine. But hey, if you've got some nice little cutters or even like a mason jar glass, that always works well too. Yesterday, I took the time to cut up all the ingredients ahead of time for this dinner, which I don't always prep like that, but on the days that I do, it sure does make it easy. 
This is one of those meals that's great for leftover chicken. Like if you had a chicken roast the night before and you deboned it and you had a bunch of leftover chicken, this recipe is great for that. I didn't have that, so I just cooked up some chicken breast ahead of time. So here you see me just adding some more oil and I'm gonna add about one cup of uncooked rice. And then we are going to just bring that to a boil and simmer it before adding the broccoli and the other ingredients. Well, it's morning here on the homestead and I figured since we were going with the biscuit theme in this video that I would just roll that right into breakfast. So you guys know this summer we picked a ton of fresh wild Alaskan blueberries. We have like five or six gallons of frozen blueberries out in the deep freezer. And so it's been fun finding different things to use them for. So this morning I'm going to make a really yummy blueberry biscuit breakfast with a little bit of icing to drizzle on top. When we lived in Virginia, we had a fast food restaurant called Bojangles. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. And they had something really yummy they called Bowberry Biscuits. They were blueberry biscuits. They were so delicious. So I am imagining that these are gonna taste the same. I've never made these before, but I love looking up new recipes to use the blueberries with. So we're gonna give it a go this morning. Now me personally, I'm not a sweet pastry kind of person for breakfast. I'm more of a savory type person. I like you know, salty, garlicky fried potatoes and eggs and bacon and those kinds of things, but it's always fun to do something a little different. And these blueberry biscuits are just beautiful. I'm just gonna whip up a simple icing for these biscuits and as usual I'll make sure to link this recipe for you guys as well in the video description.
Good morning. So we are just being a little lazy. You know, it's still Christmas break. So I just find that we're cooking a lot and we're hanging out in the cabin and we're sledding and we're just not really doing a whole lot right now. We've got the rest of this week off from school. So we're just taking advantage of it before we get back into the swing of the regular routine of things around the property. So today we're just hanging outside playing with the dogs and the kids. Boys got some new snowboards this Christmas from our lovely subscriber, Carrie. She sent two brand new snowboards for the boys this year and they have been practicing. And to my surprise, they picked up on it super quick. But we're gonna do something a little fun today. Joe's gonna to pull him around behind the Polaris, kind of like you would water ski, but they're gonna be snowboarding on the snow. So anyway, we're just gonna have some fun in the snow. We're just gonna have some fun. All right, Joe's got a little setup here for the boys. Rigged up some little handles. <laughs> you ready for this, Pete? Yeah. Are you scared or excited? Um, both. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, just let go. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna go slow though, don't worry. All right. We don't wanna send you guys to the emergency room, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. If you have if you have to let go, just let go. Okay. Like you don't wanna hold on when he's still going, right? If you fall, let go. <laughs> We have a, a regular occurrence of birds that fly into our windows. You guys know we have a ton of windows on the front of the cabin. And uh, Joe went out side for a minute and found this little bird. I think what happened was he probably hit the window today, got knocked out, and then came to after it was dark. So um, we're gonna keep him overnight in a little kennel and then tomorrow when it's light outside, we'll try to let him go and we'll see um, he's quite feisty, but he doesn't seem to want to fly away tonight. I don't know if it's because it's dark or what. But let me show you. He's adorable. Oh, I think... Oh, you're all right. It might be a baby pine grosbeak. 
<laughs> I don't want him to fly away because the cats are in the house. You're all right. Uh, but this does look like it might be a grass beak, a small one. I might be wrong, but we're gonna get him settled in a little cat kennel that we have for the night. And then once it's light outside tomorrow, we'll, we'll let him go. So it turns out he is not a grass beak. We looked him up on bird, what is it, picture bird? Mm -hmm. It's an app where you can take a picture of the bird. It is a uh, red pole finch and he is a male because he's got a red chest. Yeah, super cute. Got a little kennel for the night. Well, good morning. Joe and I are gonna be working on harvesting some firewood today. I know you guys see a lot of that here on our channel, but that's just a reality of our life here off grid in Alaska. <laughs> We will be using the snow machine today and the sled to haul the wood back to the cabin. A lot of you guys have asked in the comments section when you see us pulling the sled manually, why don't you just use a snow machine or something? And we can, it's just, it all depends on a couple things. Uh, how close the trees are that we're harvesting in you know, comparison to where the cabin is. If they're super close, like on our last video, we were harvesting wood right here on our property and it was only 30 feet from the driveway. So we're not gonna go and get the snow machine out, get it started, especially in negative 23 degrees right it's just easier just to go cut the tree down and for me and Joe to pull the sled it's it is a lot of work but you guys it's cold out here so uh, it's very true what they say you cut firewood you're heating yourself up twice right you're gonna heat yourself up while you're cutting it down hauling it and then you're gonna heat it up inside the cabin so it's just a part of life here I love heating the cabin with wood heat Joe cleans out the stovepipe about twice a year and it's just uh, it's all of it. It's the instant gratification of hot, hot heat on a cold day. And it's also the ambiance of cabin life here in Alaska for me. I 
personally need to have a wood stove in a cabin if I'm going to be living in Alaska. It just doesn't make sense not to. I like the independence of knowing that if, you know, things go down, things happen, we can heat our own home. We're not dependent upon fuel and things like that. So it's important to us to have the wood heat. And because of that, we are, you know, collecting firewood on a regular basis. And some of you ask why we don't do that in the summer. Why do we wait until the winter time to harvest firewood? Well, we don't. We, we harvested firewood all throughout the summer. If you go and look at our videos, we have a ton of videos this summer that we were harvesting down trees here in the clearing that we took down about a year ago. And uh, the problem is they're still wet. So they have to season in the woodshed for a period of time before we can use them in the wood stove. But you know, we got here in the middle of winter when we moved to our Alaska homestead and there was not enough time for us to harvest all the wood we would need for the winter. So it's been a work in progress and we don't mind a little additional work here and there throughout the winter time. It's part of why we moved out here and we just love it. We did get our woodshed built this summer. This is only one woodshed. We do plan on having another one or two more for more space, but I am really happy with the woodshed that we built this summer. It turned out really nice, but as you can see, we only have it half full. And right now we're using the other half to store the uh, wood splitter. <laughs> so we don't have a garage or a shop right now. So for right now, that's just been a great spot for the wood splitter. And we do have a bunch of dry birch in here from this summer that we did not get to finish splitting. Other projects took priority, but we have a lot of firewood. We did a lot this summer, but it's, some of it's still wet and we can't use that in the wood stove. So it's just, uh, it's part of what we do out here. The boys are out here playing with their Christmas presents. What you got here, P? A new jet since my other one broke. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I can bring it back in over here. Got a big open clearing to fly in. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Ah! Where's Callan? Uh, he went inside. To warm his hands up, huh? Yeah. I think his hands were getting cold. Mm -hmm. I fell in love when you entered the room And when the light hit your face We were just kids but I knew right away That I will be with you until I stop breathing I will keep loving you as long as my heart's beating all right, we made it to a place where we found a few dead spruce that we're gonna take down. Unfortunately, I might have to put my snowshoes on. Are you putting yours on, Joe? I hate snowshoes. Yeah, you guys were laughing at me on the last video. <laughs> Asked me if I like wearing snowshoes. No, I don't. I don't like them at all. I feel clumsy in them. I feel like I don't have any control. And it's just like they get caught up on each other and you trip over everything. It's just funky. It's like wearing big old duck feet. But sometimes you need it. Like we just got stuck a second ago with the snow machine and I had to get off and I stepped off the trail and my it went down. I went all the way down in the snow up to my hip level. So it's pretty deep snow. I'm gonna see if I can get away with just walking on the trail that Joe already packed down. I do anything and everything I can to not have to put snowshoes on, but we'll see. And take down that bad boy. Yeah, for all the people that are like, don't kill the trees. This one's already dead. It's been dead for a long time. Nice and dry, perfect for firewood. So the weather today is the exact opposite of our last video. It was negative 23 on our last video and it's 23 in the positive Fahrenheit today. So it is much warmer. I can breathe out here <laughs> without coughing and covering my face with a scarf. So it's a good day to cut firewood.
look, I don't mess around when it comes to these trees. You guys might remember last, no, it wasn't last summer. It was the summer before that when we came out to the cabin. Joe fell a tree and I wasn't, it's kind of my fault. I wasn't paying attention. I was videoing and I was looking through the viewfinder, which looks very different than if you're actually looking at it in person. And the tree almost hit me. So I've learned that no matter what you try to do and what direction you try to fell a tree, sometimes things happen, things don't go as planned. So I always get way, way, way out of the way when he's chopping down a tree. wants it to go to the left, but it's leaning to the right. <laughs> Be careful, Joe! I hate when he uses his own body, especially with those snowshoes on. Oh boy. I think you should just let it go the way it wants to go, babe. Nope. No what? Unfortunately, we picked a, a stinker on the first one. Joe's chainsaw is pinched and stuck in there because the tree's leaning, trying to go down the hillside. All right, we've got one tree, came back for a potty break, and Joe has to adjust the chainsaw, he said, so see what he's up to in the shed, the man shed over here. 
think we're gonna go back out and get two more. We saw two more that were right next to the one we already cut down. How's it going, babe? hard to do with gloves on. Can you believe it's already January? I don't know, today's like January 5th, I think, or January 4th, I can't remember, but I can't believe it's already January. I am dreaming of my summer greenhouse already. <laughs> we are really gonna try and get that greenhouse up this summer, that is the plan. And we have some ideas for a uh, garage for Joe. So we've kind of been thinking about that, looking up some inspo on the internet and doing some drawings and stuff. And I'm super excited because this summer, my hope is to get the greenhouse done and at least start Joe's garage for the property. That'd be awesome. You good? Huh? You good? Yep. Where's your hat? <laughs> you lost your hat.
sun is so bright. Gonna get the light. Yeah, I might. I would make it. I'm like the female Eminem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, the real Tina Watson, please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. Chicka, 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 slim Tina. That firewood would be so much faster if I had a camera, man. <laughs> Babe. What's up, man? Is that your super healthy bush food? It's called fuel. What is it, Joe? Energy. Energy. Hey, why do you wear your beanie so low? You look like a vato. From Orange County, you know what I'm saying? California, eh? Rolling in the barrio. Jose. Whoa. Never mind, put that thing back on. <laughs> Joe has a thing for Rice Krispie Treats lately. Joe? Yeah, Joe. What? Unreal. Look, it wouldn't be nice of me to not eat the Rice Krispie Treats that you make, Joe. I mean, that's rude, right? Like someone makes something and it's just rude not to eat it. So of course I'm gonna support you. Oh. And you're cooking, because <laughs> I'm a good wife. Joe makes the best Rice Krispie Treats because he puts big fat marshmallows in there, a whole bunch of them. So they're extra gooey. It's all about the texture, but they're delicious. Are you are you done snacking now? Can we get back to work? The sun's going down. Got headlights. Are you ignoring me? So we have headlights. I wonder if people think you always ignore me because you talk so low. <laughs> On all the videos when I'm editing, I'll see it. And I'll be like, you know what I'm saying, Joe? And he does answer me, but you can't hear him. I can hear him, or I can see his eyebrows, right, Joe? Well, we can't see your eyebrows with your beanie that low. <laughs> you gotta learn to speak eyebrow with Joe. You can speak eyebrow, pretty fluent. You'll be good to go.